Alongside me is, is Chris Reedy, uh, uh, my fellow reporter, who's actually been speaking to Omar Bogle about this case in an exclusive interview. It was a very powerful interview that you've done with him there, Chris, as well. It's pretty clear that Bogle was deeply affected by this incident. Yeah, look, Rob, when Omar decided that he would agree to sit down with us just a couple of weeks in November, uh, back last year after the incident, it, it was clear for me to see sort of how this has affected him emotionally and his family as well. You could, you could hear it in his voice, you could see it in his eye. And he actually told me, which you will see in a second, that he, he almost shed a tear in the way back from that journey from Gillingham back to Newport. I mean, in, in terms of the incident himself, he said you know, he was shocked when he actually found out what had happened because initially he hadn't, he didn't really realise what had happened until he was alerted by his teammates. And he actually paid credit to the referee, Tom Reeves, that day, who we will be bringing you an interview of him at a, a later point about how he actually managed to get him through. And, and, and would you believe it, he went on to take a second penalty that day after he had received that racial abuse. We are going to bring you that interview now, like I said, where we did sit down with, with Omar Bogle back in November. I must apologise for any offence caused because you will see the, uh, the racist gesture that was made to Omar Bogle that day. Thanks for joining us, Omar. Obviously, just first mm -hmm. of all, I can just ask sort of how you've how you been. Um, yeah, I've been all right. Um, obviously, as time's gone on. Um, obviously, at the time it was, it was a bit, a bit shocking, like I say, uh, a few days after as well. Um, so I kind of had time to digest it and stuff now, and then yeah, I guess life moves on, I guess. And j just in terms of the incident itself, I mean, let's go from the kind of the the, the first penalty you scored and a bit before then. So, what you remember of the game from, from around that moment up until the, the incident happened? From from the start of the game, obviously, during uh, you can see. They're saying all, saying all kinds of things to me, all kinds of abuse and whatever. Not racially, not racial abuse, but you know, calling me every name under the sun as you can imagine, at games for no reason. Yeah, obviously we get the penalty, I score, and obviously I've done the, the quiet gesture. Yeah, I, I just remember as I, as I was running anyway to the corner, I was hearing monkey chants anyway as I was running over. You see the guy do what he does, and even then I did it. Even, at first I didn't actually realise what he was doing, and then I see obviously my teammates' reaction. Will especially is pointing at him, and then obviously then my focus is on him because I see Will obviously and a few other boys pointing at him. You're shocked, you know what I mean? You're a bit like, what's going on here? I've never, because obviously I've never experienced that. Then obviously I've kind of got a bit confrontational as well, and obviously the, you know my teammates held me back and stuff. If that was the first penalty, how did you feel carrying on after something like that <laughs> happened? Obviously I had I had an emotional reaction initially. Um, my teammates done well to kind of calm me down and just say like, do you know what I mean? Um, and the gaffer as well. And then obviously it clicked in my mind that, you know what I mean, like, my team needs me anyway. And at this present moment in time, the only way, the best way I can hurt them back, you could say, or to get revenge or whatever it is you, you want to say, you want to call it, is by winning the game for, for the team and us winning and me scoring again. And yeah, so it was just about getting my head back on it, to be fair, and focused again. And, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Just get, getting the job done. The ref was really good, like his response to it and you know how he dealt with me and how he dealt with the situation, that like, was really good. Was it easy to take the next penalty? Did you were you thinking about what had happened before that? Yeah, hundred percent. I was thinking, yeah, I was it was easy for me to take it. Like I knew there was no no chance I was gonna miss that. Like I don't God wasn't even gonna let that happen. After the game, I mean I remember even on the coach, I remember sitting there, because it was a long journey back and at one point like, I almost I almost shed a tear, like, or I'd say I, I had the feeling of I could shed a tear here, yeah. like thinking about it, do you know what I mean? When obviously it was all sinking in, I was just thinking like, what has actually just happened? What you experienced was so blatant and so in your face. It's interesting to say that because I often find with these interviews, someone's asked, you know, you know, how do we stop racism? And it's like, you know, who are you really to, to, to answer that? Mm -hmm. You know, it's such a big question, isn't it, of, mm -hmm. of, of, of an incident happening? There's a part of me that's glad that it was so blatant and it was so obvious because it's now it's something that people can't deny. It's still in our game, it's still prevalent in life. Whereas there's some things that I know and I feel are racially motivated in the industry, in life, in football. For me to explain it, people would look at me as if I got, like I got two heads sometimes. Are you able to give examples of, of, of that? Uh, well, I'd say I think that, you know, I think racism it shows up it showed up throughout my life. So even if you can say from 
the lack of opportunities you get and the stigmas and the judgment that is put on that I've had to experience and a lot of other black players and black people in general, the minority have experienced. Let's take that game. Before I scored, it's like the energy towards me and the reaction from their supporters to me is crazy. I could see like you could see like the hate in people's faces, like when they're like shouting abuse at me and all the rest of it. And the first thing somebody will say to that is, it's because you know you consider the main player for the team and they want to throw you off your game. But if we're going to deal with the facts <laughs> right now, well, our top goal scores were 11s, so if anyone's a threat, it's him. He scored the most goals, but there's no hate directed at him, so why is it directed at me? But then that incident happens, and you see when he does it, all the support behind him. I don't say all of them because I'm, I was told, obviously, that there's a few that did point him out to the authorities and stuff, so... But the majority of them were all clapping, were laughing, find it funny. So they are big advocates of that kind of behaviour and that kind of mindset. And you are obviously comfortable, those people are obviously comfortable with having somebody like him walk amongst them. They've kind of enabled that behaviour and they think that's okay. And then when you put that t together, then to me, I think it's clear, it's clear what it is. How do we get people to not think that way? That hate that you have in your heart to someone because they look different to you, like how do you, how do we remove that?